So welcome to today's session. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, trend analysis and forecasting. That is the main focus of today's uh, session. So if you were with us last week and last two weeks, we, we did some industry analysis where we compared industry performance with uh, uh, company-specific performance. So with uh, this sheet, we picked some industry averages. Uh, this is data that has been collected by Stephen Appiah. I mentioned that he is also a participant of the stock pitch competition. And uh, he's been, uh, he started some works already. So he picked this data and uh, I, I, that's the data I want to use to kind of help with everybody's uh, understanding of what we are doing. So with this data, we have almost all the banks here. So Cal Bank, GCB, Standard Chartered Society, General Access Bank, ADB. And if you can remember, I mentioned that co collecting data requires a lot of patience and a lot of um, paying attention to detail. If your data is wrong, you're going to have everything wrong and it will not add up. You realize that whatever you do will be different from the rest of everybody. So it is important that you pay attention to your data collection and able to get you some accurate information. All right, so we compared our company information with industry averages. So um, in terms of net interest income, the industry average came up to 452067.07, where we compared industry figures of Carbon, GCB, Standard, Society General, and the Access Bank. So with this data, we, we can tell, we can see that Cow Bank here, industry average performance <clears throat> performance with the industry average wasn't very good so um it is minus 63.74 percent lower than the industry average of 452.067 so as you can see here the company's figure 276082 is 63.74 percent lower than the industry average gcb as we can see here is higher performed better than the industry average by 66.68% and Stanchat also performed better than the industry average. All right, so I'll go straight to what we have to do today. That is the trend analysis and the forecasting. All right, so with the trend analysis, I mentioned that it's very simple. It is very straightforward. So you have to just pay attention and the just try to grasp whatever I'll have to give you. So we don't going to do the comparison quarter on quarter. So Q2 2019 versus Q2 2020 and Q2 2020 versus Q2 2021, Q2 2021 versus Q2 2022, Q2 2022 versus Q2 2023. So I'll go over this calculation again. Okay, so between 2020 and 2019, that's how you go about it. You put the equal to sign, you open your bracket twice, okay? Then um, you choose the figure at 2020, okay? So minus the figure Q2 2019, you close the bracket divided by the figure of Q2 2019, all right, you close this one to uh, multiply it by 100. So this is to tell us that between 2019 and 2020, there was an increase in interest income for Cow Bank by 18.02%. Okay, so the simple explanation is that when you are doing, uh, you are conducting a trend analysis, you compare the let's say the current performance versus the previous per, uh, performance. So you compare year two versus year one. All right, so what you do is that is the year two minus year one divided by year one, you close your brackets, they multiply by a hundred. So you come out with this figure, that's 18.02%. Let's do the same for 2021 and 2020. So 2021, you open your brackets twice. You pick your figure for Q2 2021 minus Q2 
Q2 2020, we close the brackets. You divide it by Q2 2020, all right? You close the bracket again, then you multiply it by 100. Okay, then you enter. So you realize that there's a dip in the performance of car bank between Q2 2021 and Q2 2020. All right, you do the same exercise for 2022 and 2021. You go to sign shift and open your bracket twice. All right, you pick your figure in 2022 minus figure of 2021. You close the brackets, divide by the Q2 2021 figure, close the brackets, and you multiply by 100. All right, you realize that. The performance between 2021 and 2022, there was a rise in interest income for Cow Bank. All right, let's do the same for 2023 and 2022. So you open bracket twice, click on your figure for 2023 minus the figure for 2022, that's the previous figure. You close, divide by the previous figure, you close, and then you multiply by 100. Okay, so these are your, this is your trend analysis between 2019 and 2023. I right, realized that this cow bank, in terms of interest income, has gone through this trend. It hasn't been a very stable trend. So 18%, 6 points, minus 6.08, 0 27.32, minus 0.90%. Um, so um, this is it. This is the trend analysis, all right? So with the trend analysis, you put you also put some professional presentation around it. So between, you can go about it this way. Between 2019 and 2020, there was a rise in the performance of car bank in terms of the interest income by 18.02 percent however between 2020 and 2021 there was a dip in the performance uh, by minus 6.08 the company bounced back strongly in 2021 going to 2022 with 27.32 percent performance but we're not able to continue with this trend however dipped again between 2022 and 2023 and the, the, the return was 0.90% negative. So this is a simple way of going about a trend analysis and even presenting it to your judges on the day. You conduct the same uh, the same analysis on whichever item you want to choose from here. So you can do it on the net interest income. You can do it on the net fees and commission. It depends on how or what information you want to uh, you want to give out to your to your audience so we have cash and cash equivalent we can speak about it regarding this trend that i've spoken about so you see it's very simple and straightforward current figure compared with the previous figure divided by the previous figure all right then you multiply by 100 and your figures will come out it's very simple in excel i'll move straight to forecasting also very simple in excel okay this is a presentation you want to go and do for your investors so you don't spend too much time once the data comes out quickly you put the data together then you start putting your excel uh, skills quickly you get your uh, your your figures then you start doing your presentation so the forecasting i'll go to this sheet to the same data all right with the forecasting the way it is you need to have your current your current data as in 2023 data at the far right you realize in the previous data, um, it is the other way around, 2019 on the far right, 2020, 2021, and so on. But with the forecasting data, because we want to forecast into the future, mm, so 2024, 20, 2025, 2026, 20, 2027, and so on, 2028, right? the same number of years, that's the same number of, periods you can do your forecasting in all right so this is it because you want to forecast into the future we you have to arrange it in this manner so moving towards the right all right so also very very simple all you have to do is to highlight 
as I am doing. Highlight of figures in the years. Okay, so highlight the figures in the years. Then you go into your Excel. All right, and uh, look for data. All right, in case you find it difficult to look for it, you can just tap the search button and just type in data. Okay, so um, yeah, this data is not really. Let's click on this and see. No, this is not what I am looking for. But there's data right on the screen here. All right, so just click on data here. All right, and the, you can see forecast, forecast sheet. Okay, then you simply click on it. So as you can see, it has produced a chart for you. Okay, so on this screen, it's asking for the end period for your forecasting. So you can put in 2028 there. Then you click on create. All right, create. These are your forecasted figures. So you realize that Cow Bank has been forecasted upwards. Okay, so um, there are three figures, as you can see here, three sections of forecasted figures. So we have forecast interest income. These are the figures that you will be working with. We have the lower bound, we have the upper bound. The lower bound means that in case things don't go as normal, as we can see with this trend, if things don't go per what we have seen here, then it is possible that the figures will be lower than we are forecasted here. And the things may be much, much better. Okay. And the, the company might achieve the upper bound, confidence bound. So that is the upper bound that we can see there. Okay. So all things being equal, as the economists will say, all things being equal, this should be the figures. Okay. So we can right click on our sheet and add data labels. Add the data labels. So these are the figures there. We can build in them. We can build in the figures. We can arrange them very beautifully. Select them one by one. Okay, make sure they are all very visible so that in doing your presentation, you won't struggle to see them. All right, so these are your forecasted, uh, the figures, as you can see from 2019, these are the figures. Then uh, your forecasted figures, you can also put at the data labels as well. So I'm sure some of you will be confused how I'm going about this thing, but um, just take your time and arrange it. On this chart, you just have to right click. Mm -hmm. When you right click, this information will come out. Add data labels and add your data labels, right? And the figures will just populate on the screen. Okay. So you arrange them so that on the day of the presentation, they will be visible for you or they'll be legible so that you can read them out. So this is this is as simple as this. This is just forecasting. Okay. So all things being equal, this should be the forecasted figures for Cow Bank when we are talking about the interest income. Okay. In school, we may be taught. We, we may have gone through some formulas um, in going about this forecasting, but I'm saying that you put that one aside and let's apply this Excel. When you come to the office, when you come to the workplace, when you come, you enter into the industry to work with us, nobody is going to ask you which formula you applied. All right. Excel has made it very simple for all of us. Okay. But it is important that you understand the procedures. Okay. Um, these are the basic way of going about it. You can go deeper. We will have another session to really explain forecasting. But for the purposes of stock pitch competition, 
This is a very simple approach to go about it. So with this forecasting, you can do for net interest income, you can do for the net fees and commission, cash and cash equivalent, any item or any other sessions that you want to pick from here. You can do same for the any special, pick any of them and start doing your forecasting on them. Okay, it is very simple. The trend, the trend was very straightforward. We went by it very, very easily. So, um, as I said, it is very simple. All right. So, um, quickly, I'll go to the chat box. I think some people have put some questions there. I'll try to read and uh, attempt to answer all of them. Okay. So, if you have any questions, too, you can unmute your mic so that I try to or attempt to answer them. So, this one comes from um, in Same in Bain. So it says, good evening, please. I would like to know if you stock pitch a holding such as a Cuban group, do you compare it with local banks or other listed holdings such as Access, GTB? Okay, so I think I understand the import of your question. So the analysis is being done on companies that are listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Okay, so when you pick GCB, the banks that I listed earlier, so let me go back to the bank data. Not all of them are listed on the exchange. Okay, you can just concentrate on the listed banks. However, if you want to get a broader information and you want to be very competitive, you can include the other banks like APSA, which is not listed. Um, Bank of Africa is not listed. Consolidated Bank is not listed. FBN, Fidelity, most of them are not listed. So when you include all these banks, you can say for the whole banking industry, this is the performance. However, if you limit yourself to the listed banks, you can just base your information on the listed banks. So the average of all listed banks, that is also allowed. Okay, so... um. I don't know whether I've answered your question for you. Okay, so second, second question for you as analysts, what are the best ratios investor wants to be convinced on all industry conf confused and why? Okay, so I understand where you're also coming from with this one. So every industry that you want to conduct your analysis on and the ratios that you have to use. So we have banking ratios. All right. When you come to manufacturing, to there are ratios that you can also adapt. All right. Um, you just have to maybe go into Google and just find out um what are the best uh the best banking ratios, and uh, you get a full list of ratios that you can adopt. So from my quick search, I'm seeing net interest margin, loan to asset ratio, return on assets. Return on equity and so on. Okay, so um, the industry or the company that you want to perform your analysis on depends on the company. Then you select your ratios that you, that is very very adaptable to the to the industry. So the next question says, "Sir, please, in the financial statement, there's always one part for group and the other part for company. So I want to ask." that in doing your analysis, are you going to use both group and company data or which one will you use? Very, very good question. So um, for a company like Enterprise, you have Enterprise Insurance, you have Enterprise Life, you have Enterprise Group. So for Enterprise, you see that it is Enterprise Group that is listed. Mm -hmm. So you use Enterprise Group data, you compare the group data, all right? Um, for GCB Bank, GCB Bank is listed. Is the one that is listed. Access Bank is the Access Bank that is listed. So you concentrate on the institution or the part that is listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Okay, so that we can have a very good information. So Goyle, we have the Goyle Group. Okay, but uh, there is Goyle Ghana Limited. So do conduct your analysis on Goyle. All right, let me. 
attend to. So, uh, baby, can you can unmute yourself and speak to us? All right. Uh, can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, once again, good evening. Um, I am the one who asked the question about Ecobank Group and so, so, and so. Okay. Okay, the problem is that uh, I want to know if I have to compare Ecobank Group with other listed companies such as Access and GT Bank because Access and GT Bank, like Zeni, they are listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. That's the problem. That's that's what I, I wanted to know if I can compare Ecobank Group, which is listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange, and and some other companies which are listed on other stock exchanges. Uh, are you done with your question? Yes. Okay. Um, you can do that, but I would say that it will be too much work for you. All right. Um, we we want to concentrate on the Ghana market. Okay, so when you have okay. um, a company like Access Bank, which is also on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, um, no, we are not expecting that you compare it with the Nigerian uh, sister company in Nigeria. So you compare Access Bank with GCB, all right? Compare Access Bank yes. with, yeah, with, with the local bank, as in the Ghanaian uh, registered banks or the Ghanaian listed banks. I hope it's clear. So don't compare Ghana... Access Bank with Nigeria Access Bank, okay, or APSA as we have here to the one that's listed in the in UK. Uh, I mean backlist. Yes. That's what. I mean. uh -huh. So you don't do those comparison. I right? just concentrate on the local base what we have in Ghana. Okay, but uh, the reason why I ask this question is that, I mean, it's because EcoBank Group is like the only banking group listed on the stock exchange so i don't i don't have any other banking group to compare so that's why i asked this question okay so on the ghana stock exchange we have echo bank ghana all right there's echo bank ghana and we have echo bank transnational incorporated yes good so you compare echo bank ghana do the comparison with Ecobank Ghana. You can uh, you can adopt Ecobank Transnational Incorporated. However, if you concentrate on Ecobank Ghana, that will be much more very helpful. So Ecobank Ghana compare with GCB Bank, compare with Access Bank, and the rest. You understand? Those are the peers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so um, in the financial statement, there are always one part for. Okay, so I've answered this question. Okay, so it looks like Christopher attempted to answer um, because of comparison between companies and other groups. Okay, so Paul Chan, I get you, please. What is the purpose of the group data? Okay, so you don't, if, uh, like I said, if the group is not listed, don't bother yourself. If the group is listed, then you can make your comparisons with those, those information. Okay, so um, Michael, Michael Awe is asking, please, may I plead with you to just go through for me again? So it is going to be on the YouTube channel. I also want to plead with you that uh, we're going to post it onto the YouTube channel. I'm going to mention my phone number just in case you want to have any assistance so you can message me. All right, please don't go message me so that I can try and assist you. I'll give some other numbers too. In case you need some assistance, you can also call them so that they assist you. And then um, we have a last son who says, so, so the forecasted figures are the figures that a company might be having in the years to come. Yes, I like the word might. Um, let me say something about forecasting. So with forecasting, we all know what has been happening. Okay, so we have an institution like the World Bank, the IMF, Bank of Ghana, and so on. They're all forecasted, right? They've all been forecasting. But sometimes forecasting is not 
does not always mean that you should be right. Right. So we also what happened with COVID and the Russia Ukraine war. All these institutions made a lot of forecasting. However, when this thing came in, they all came out and said, "No, let us revise our figures. We're coming now. We revise figures and so on." So forecasted figures do not mean that they will happen for sure. But these are pair. All all things being equal, we're expecting that these figures should be met. So I like the word that you have used there, might. So that the company might be having in the years to come. Yes, that is the right expression to make. So Stephen also says, hi, sir, please thank you for the comprehensive, comprehensive presentation. My question has to do with number one, why should we use ratios in the trend analysis and not look at the figures early? Well, it depends on how you want to do your presentation. All right, you can look at the figures early. Okay, you can also use the, the But in using the figures directly, it makes the work very easy for you as beginners. Okay, so as beginners, it is very, very advisable to use the figures directly so that you don't confuse yourselves. Okay, so either way, it's okay. Number two, it says, in the selection of a company on the listed companies to pitch, can a person or group choose the same company that different group? No, I'm not getting. So in the selection of a company on the listed companies to pitch, can one can a person or a group choose the same company? Okay, so you're asking whether different different groups can choose the same company to pitch on. Yes, so you can have five groups who have chosen to pitch on MTN. All right, your figures can be the same. The presentation will be the difference. So you might all be having the same figures throughout, but how you do your presentation, the the make of the presentation, how you do your presentation is what is going to differentiate between you and the other person. So as I said earlier, it is the way you present yourself. Okay, make sure you get somebody who is good with presentation. If you're not good yourself, team up with somebody who is very good in presentation because it's not just the data collection and the, how you go about your PowerPoint presentation. That is not enough. You have to have a communicator. Somebody is able to convince. With the same figures, somebody can say that um, this is a buy stock. Okay, this stock, we you need to buy. While with the same figure, another person too can say, no, 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 I think this is a sell. It depends on how you go about your presentation. How you go about it is the most important thing. Okay, so the same people can have the same company. The difference would be the presentation. Um, this one also says, also coming from MK. Please, this is my first time joining. When is a stock pitch competition, please? So it's going to happen the last quarter of this year. All right, so you can prepare yourself. You'll be called. Okay, if you have your name, if you haven't given your name out uh, or you haven't filled the form, you have to contact us so that we help you get the form. All right, so my number is 0244208667. Message me only, and I'm going to reply to you. Okay, try and contact me so that we help you. Isaac also says, please, can we get the Excel file you are presenting? This is my personal data. This is somebody's personal data. So you have to take your time and also collate your own data. I showed you where you can, you can get the data from, okay? So... Um, Bank of Ghana, Ghana Statistical Service, the bank's website, annualreportsghana.com. Okay, get onto those pages or those uh, websites and take them from there. And uh, this one, Christopher says, please, I need the registration link. Two friends of mine want to register for the competition. So message me, 0244208667. Message me, I'll send you the link so that you can register i'll go back to the youtube page i'll share that page with you that is finally i'll go back to the youtube page so that uh, i'll guide you on how to maneuver your way so this is our channel i mentioned earlier so all you have to do is to put the ad sign then type young investors network it is very 
very easy to maneuver. So you scroll, that is our channel, Young Investors Network. There are 639 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, friendly subscribe. Okay, these are the two videos that we have on it regarding this year's stock pitch competition. So 115 views for the part one and 77 views for the part two. Okay, so these are the channels. This so you click on it. If you have any question too, you can let us know. Mm -hmm. So we have the presentation there. All right. Okay, so it's very easy. You can message me, I'll guide you. Let me quickly go over just a summary of what has been done so far. So that um, those who came in late can have an idea what we did today. So this is a... Okay, so we went through data collection, economy analysis, industry analysis. These are the data sources, as I mentioned earlier, Trading Economics, Ghana, Google it. Okay, um, Bank of Ghana, Ghana Statistical Service, the various banks, when you Google GCB Bank, their website, you can enter it and get their data from there. We have annual reports, Ghana.com. It's a sample of the economy analysis. So I'll take the last question, Isaac, as more. Isaac, you can ask your question. Uh, please, just a uh, point of information. Somebody's video is on, if you can see. Yes. I'm a uh -huh. Alasa. Is, is, it, is, it, is it disturbing? Uh... <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I didn't see it to be disturbing. That's why I'm, I'm mute on it. So, ah, okay. Uh, so let's, let's just move on. All right. Okay. This is, yeah, sure. Thank you. So this is a summary of the economy analysis, as I said earlier. So you don't need to have any detailed information. Pick your inflation figure, pick your uh, interest rate figure, pick your depreciation rate figure. They are all online. Once you pick them, you can put some English around it. You don't need any detailed information. It's just, it's just something very short for economy analysis. Okay. So um, with the industry, I've spoken about it. All depends on your presentation, how you do your comparisons and so on. You can speak about a short analysis. They are also, uh, it can give you an added, added advantage. So just go straight into it. The most important things are what we have spoken about. And today we did um, trend analysis and forecasting. So I'm going to put this information also online, trend analysis and forecasting. These are, we don't need these narratives. It is what we have done, the practicals of it. That is the most important. There's a lot of notes here, which are of little importance to pitches, all right? The most important is to be able to go about your presentation very well. So um, I'll end here. Next week, we're going to go into valuation. We're going to go into valuation. So gradually we are building into the stock pitch itself. So if there are no more questions, I'll end again by mentioning my number, 0244-208-667. Um, we'll meet again next week. Thank you.